Hey everybody, um, sorry I'm so late getting this up, um, it's just, yeah, like I, like I said in my email, I had a youth group trip, um, which was really more like a, uh, sleep deprivation trip, uh, it went great though, and the kids, uh, the kids were worshipping and, um, attending to scripture and, uh, having fun fellowshipping, so it was a, it was a success, but I found myself way behind, and I've been trying to catch up ever since we, uh, got back on Monday night, um, Really, there's only one. I, I'm, I'm assuming that the bibliography assignment should be pretty straightforward. Uh, it's really just designed to make sure that you're um, on track to have, you know, with this assignment nine um, academic sources. I would say that uh, really no essay of a 2,500 word length will really be academic with less than 10 sources. Um, so this is a great opportunity for you to be forced to, uh, you know, get what you need. For those of you who have uh, difficulty uh, lo um, acquiring sources, let me know, um, and I will try to uh, find the sources for you. If, if it comes down to me having to go to the library at the Pasadena campus and uh, making PDFs of chapters for you, I mean, I'm willing to do that. Uh, I just need to know what you need. So you may find yourself... Um, uh, wanting sources that are hard to acquire, please, by all means, email me if there's something that you're looking for. You never know, I might even already have it in my Kindle library, in which case I can do a loan to you, uh, so that's free of charge and super easy for both of us. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, you're tracking down sources and uh, making sure that you are using them. Uh, the other major thing this week is uh, your uh, forum post and response, which is due, uh, everything's due uh, a day late this week, so your forum post and response, your first forum post is due Friday at midnight, um, and your uh, response and your REA 7 will be due on Monday at midnight. For that, uh, for that forum post, I've asked you to read the, uh, the Birch article from um, the Dictionary of Scripture and Ethics. First off, uh, the the DSC is an incredible resource. If you have an extra twenty five bucks, I think that's what it costs on Amazon these days. Um, you could do a lot worse. It's a pretty amazing thing. It, uh, scholars from Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, um, Lutheran, mainstream evangelical, like every single academic background or church background you can imagine, all getting together and uh, and trying to reason with Scripture uh, ethically. It's a pretty, it's a, it's a unique and it's a fascinating um, volume, so if you have a chance to interact with it more, you should. Uh, this essay is really, um, it's a, it's, first off, it's a fantastic introduction, and one of the things that it does really well is it gives you a very short, uh, concise, but very accurate um, description of the three sort of basic ways that people uh, reason with scripture, or three um, three uh, attitudes or approaches to moving from this is what the Bible says to this is what we need to do. Uh, for a lot of us, we grow up um, never a even asking the question of how that works. Um, you've all seen the bumper sticker that says um, th uh, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it, or something like that. Um, that is a... Uh, that's what I think would be the, the naive view that most um, evangelicals uh, come to Scripture with. We, we just assume we're, when we're very young or we're young in our faith, we find uh, that we're directed to what appear to be moral commands, usually something like Matthew 5, uh, 5 to 7, it's the Sermon on the Mount, or uh, the Ten Commandments, or maybe even uh, Paul's, some of Paul's uh, moral commands in, say, 1 Corinthians. Um, and and these uh, and, and this way of reasoning makes makes a very simple statement. It's like the Bible says this; it is absolutely true in all circumstances. Therefore, we should do it. Um, of course, the problem with that that uh, sort of naive view is that as we go through Scripture, we find out that there's there are different perspectives on one and the same issue throughout Scripture. Uh, a great example would be something like adult um, adultery, right? Where you have texts in 
um, the Torah in the in the first five books of the of, of the scriptures, which say you know command uh, the death sentence for adultery, and then of course you have Jesus um, meeting the adulterous woman in, in the Gospel of John, and he sort of overturns what goes on uh, in the Torah. The 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 Jews around him are ready to stone her to death, and Jesus says you know uh, he who's without sin uh, may cast the first stone. What that does is it complicates it complicates things. We might be tempted to make another broad statement. Well, we don't have to pay attention to the the first five books of the Bible. We don't need to pay attention to the the Jewish law. Um, that was then. This is now. All we have to do is follow Jesus. This is uh, traditionally this is, has been the Anabaptist uh, tradition. Their approach to ethics and Scripture. They say <clears throat> Matthew five to seven is normative. Everything else is. Um, uh, subsidiary and should be treated that way. And in some ways, the Anabaptist tradition, although it's a, a Protestant um, sect, is very much in keeping with what we have of the moral commands of the church fathers. In the first centuries of the church, uh, there was a very, very strict moral expectation. And it was pretty much just word for word what Jesus says in Matthew 5 to 7. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. But uh, that's that's one way of going about things. But it's not the only way. There are uh, lots of different approaches, and the sort of three families are outlined by Birch. I think he calls it the uh, history behind the text, um, the canonical approach, and the Bible as uh, something like present-day living. And each one of those has strengths and weaknesses. And one thing I hope that you'll do is I hope that you'll begin to see that you probably do reason... Um, in each of these ways. Uh, you probably do expect that knowing the history behind a text will help you understand the meaning of that text for today. You probably do recognize that there are uh, different views about ethical guidelines throughout the course of the scriptures, and sometimes it's important to think about how the, uh, you know, sort of set the scriptures in conversation with each other, setting Torah in conversation with Jesus in or with respect to adultery. Um, and you probably uh, see yourself as, um, you, you see the scriptures as speaking to you, or to your community directly. Those are all legitimate ways of thinking, and they're probably, to some extent, ways that we all approach uh, the Bible and when we think about ethics. So, hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I got a little sick up in the mountain. Um. Uh, so for this form response, try to consistently think about how you would reason using one of these approaches. And if you have the opportunity, you can you know go to Amazon.com and get the free preview of the Dictionary of Scripture and Ethics. Look at a couple of the articles and see what um, the author says about gambling or about um, I don't know marriage. You know, um, there there's just there are so many different articles and they all come from different approaches and they all try to think. Um, through things in different ways, and it's worth looking at them just to see how scholars are doing it, um, so that you can first identify how you tend to reason ethically with scripture, and second, uh, maybe challenge that, or maybe uh, augment that with different um, techniques. Uh, this is an open question. No one, I don't, I don't think anyone has totally figured out um, how we, you know, do ethics with scripture, but. Uh, it's um, it's something that we have to do if we're going to be faithful to the conviction that the scriptures are authoritative um, for uh, not only what we believe but how we live. So it's a great time in orientation at theological studies to start uh, questioning these things, start um, thinking about them, and hopefully, uh, as you you know take classes like uh, Christian ethics um, and even your systematic theology classes, uh, the rest of your time at Fuller, you'll begin to uh, broaden the way that you uh, think about these things. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, like uh, I, I sent you an email where we're trying it differently this week, you can respond to this uh, micro lecture directly. If you'd like, you can post your own video <coughs> or an audio clip, whatever you like. Um, if you have questions about how to do that, uh, you can ask me. I'm not exactly sure I even know, but I'll try. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Um, thanks for listening. See you.